All right, what is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're all doing well. Let's just get into it. Uh, as always, link in the description to my Patreon where the project files will be uploaded as long as I'm using free assets. And let's make a multiplayer game. So, um, this is what we have right now. We, have, we are working on our combat system. So I think let's start because we need to this is our enemy here and we need to actually start to apply damage. So let's do that. Or maybe not damage, let's start with the tracing at least. Um so we need a way to actually register if we are hitting an enemy or not. And I think we are going to put that in the master character actually, because the AI will also use that. So, shared functions, we're going to make a test event. Does it even need to be a custom event? Uh, let me think. Yes, it does, because we want this to. <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. Should it be a client or PC? This is the thing. We could just do this on the server. Uh, which is probably the correct way to do it. Let's do a couple of things. Let's see. Um, let's just make a function. Togo damage trace. We'll see where we put it. Uh, damage trace on. Actually, don't even need that. So, whenever we damage trace, we will mm. we'll gain up, get our weapon. Let's make two sockets in our weapon. Uh, so, we grab this static mesh, we add a socket. I really don't like this static mesh. It's the like it should be straight. It's annoying to work with. And it's not like this. So maybe I will change it. But I'm gonna put it here. Mm. Damage trace socket. Call the socket damage trace socket. Maybe a little bit further down. Something like that. We're gonna copy this name. We're gonna go into our master character. We're gonna get socket location. We're gonna paste in that name that we just made. So we get the location of this socket. It has to be the exact name. So we're gonna do sphere, sphere trace by channel or for objects. Okay, let's do sphere trace for objects and let's create a new. Go into project settings. Mm. Find collision. Is it collision? And let's make a new trace channel because we want to be able to damage stuff. Um, 
and this is a collision channel, right? So you have static, dynamic, pawn, and stuff. So we want to set the character mesh, this mesh, to actually hold that collision channel. So if we go to collisions, you could do the capsule as well, but we want it to be like if you shoot an arrow between the legs, it probably shouldn't register collision. So we wanna we wanna try to keep it on the actual mesh. Uh, and it's an object type here, right? Mm. No, it's a let me just think here. We are tracing, because if we trace for, ba, 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 so maybe not objects, it should be, no, objects is bad, because we wanna, maybe we wanna damage other stuff than just characters, like pawns, so, because now we could do pawn, and it will damage that, but what if we want? other things oh we could do for objects because that that's a pawn let's do for objects for now and we can just add other stuff later so uh, start and end no we'll do the start and we'll do a radius of like 10 Just to ignore, make array self. Yeah, ignore self is there as well. Um, uh, bum 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 bum. Hit color green sounds nice. And let's do debug for duration and. For each loop, let's do this for now. Or oh, we're gonna add some stuff here later, but mm. if we hit something, we're gonna break. And we're gonna, for now, we're just gonna print string the hit actor. Toggle launch is cool. And here we're gonna do a function called client toggle damage trace and for now we're gonna make it run on the owning client this is however you want to do it you could make it entirely server based which is probably better if you're doing a more serious if you if you were doing a competitive game or something you should probably do everything on the server but as i said this is a co-op game i want to i want to prioritize performance so each client will just handle their all their own traces basically instead of taking it on the server and the server player will have a lot going on on their computer so let's do client might change it later we'll do we'll do this for now input damage trace on Do a branch and if it's on we're gonna do a set timer by function name i'm gonna copy the trace name in here from the function we just made in there i'm gonna put it something like 0 and it's gonna be looping we're gonna promote the output here to a variable called damage trace handle this is a timer handle and 
And from the false, we want to stop the timer because we're turning the trace off. So clear and invalidate timer by handle. I think that's fine. And we want to go into our DPI character. Probably should make a new interface. So I'm going to make a new folder here called Combat System. In here, I will make a new Blueprint interface called BPI Combat. This will hold a function called call toggle damage trace, and the input will be damage trace on. So now we need to implement the interface into our character. Call, ah. go to class settings. Uh, implement interfaces. Wait, why don't the character have? No interfaces. How is this working then? Master character. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's on the, yeah. So the character, we have the character interface and we need the combat interface as well. There we go. And now we can do event, event call toggle damage trace. And from there, client toggle damage trace. And we'll make a combat. I'll make a comment. Random color, there we go. And now we will use animation states to determine if we should do the trace or not. Mm. So I'm just going to copy the can't take action, copy it in, state damage trace. And here we'll do call toggle damage trace. And on the begin, it should now be on, not off as here. And on the end, It should be off. So now we need to actually go to our animations. And it's these that I'm using, right? Yep, I'm gonna make a new. Click here, notify track. And notify state, gonna be state damage trace. And I'm not, now I'm gonna put that state like where I want the actual trace to happen. So probably from somewhere from the start of the swing. Maybe a little bit earlier, like there, to the end of the swing. So that's where we will stop tracing. Something like that. And on the other one as well, do the same thing. Probably from around there to around there. see if we can get any traces yeah okay you can see it is tracing but the swing is pretty fast and we're only tracing every 0 0.1 seconds mm. and let's also see what happens
So on the server, it's replicating. We don't want it to replicate, that's the thing. So why is it replicating on the server? It should be on the client alone. Uh, you can see that it's kind of staggering when you look at it from another player's perspective like the shield and the sword are and that's because the animations are not good it's retargeted from the i just made simply retargeted from uh, uh, i think it's from gray stone and the, if something is going on with the hands every now and then so it's not not really optimal every Anyway, why does that happen? Owning client. Mm, so, it's locally controlled. That's not gonna happen though. If we do that, it's not gonna trigger on the server for, I'm not sure if AI clients are locally controlled or not on the server. Well, we'll try with this, but that could cause issues when we do the AI. So I'm just going to comment that out for myself. We'll just see. I will keep that in here for now. And, and let's see, that seems to work. Anyway, it's, so you, you can see it's not firing, like those traces aren't enough to actually hit anything. And if I were to reduce this, or maybe not that much, but you can see it's firing more often now, right? So that's better would be better for hitting something you can see we hit but we didn't hit there we hit so it's not it's not ideal the solution uh, so we still don't want to trace too much so i'm gonna do like this i'm gonna go in here and i'm gonna increase this to something like 20 and we're gonna go in here and drag this down a little bit. So the traces are a bit bigger, but it's still not ideal to hit anything. So we're gonna go into our character again. And we're gonna make two variables. Mm. I'm gonna make one variable called previous trace location. Previous damage trace location. And we're gonna make a vector. So the start should be the previous damage trace location and the end should be the location it is on now. Mm. So at the end, after the trace is done, let's see if this works. So after the trace is done, we're going to set the previous trace to the current location of it. Let's see if that works. Okay, that did not work. Mm. 
Ah, yeah. And we need to also, because now it's tracing from the zero location. You see zero to the weapon trace. So I think that is because we need to, at the start of this trace, before we actually trigger the function, we need to, because it's zero by default, right? So before we do any tracing, we need to set it to the location where it starts. Let's see if that works. That works better, but it, you can see it's still not tracing fast enough, so we need to increase this. Zero, three, maybe. Let's see what happens. There we go. That's a better trace. Now you can see we will hit it on every swing. And you have to fine tune this the way you want to. Uh, there's an issue with this. Is I could possibly, possibly swing on the other side of the character. That does not seem to be an issue with this. You could. There's two ways you could deal with that. If you have a, for instance, if I have a very long weapon, it's not. This sword is not very long. But if I had a longer weapon, so the socket would be at the end there. The potential would be that I'm hitting around this character, as you see now. So to deal with that, you could. Yeah, you have to deal with it in separate ways, but until I run into that issue, I'm not going to bother with it. But the smart solution would probably be to add another trace, maybe in the middle or something, and have two traces. So you would just copy this, you would do, um, you would do, in this function, you would do two traces. So you would first do one, you could have a sequence this and then do that exact thing again I might do it later but I'm gonna not do it now we'll see if we run into that issue um, so then you would just do another trace you would you would probably do something like that, get socket 2, and then have another previous trace location 1, previous trace location 2, and you would do the same thing. Uh, for me, this is fine. Uh, I'm just gonna increase the trace with light to be a little bit bigger, just to make sure. And I'm probably always gonna hit. I'm gonna pull it down a bit and the reason I'm putting it down a bit is because the trace goes around here anyway so it's gonna reach the top uh, perfect so now we want to not debug so say I'm not debugging this and I'm printing every time I hit right but you can see I hit him twice once a lot of times uh, and that's because the trace hits the actor multiple times so we want to do to avoid that we want to make sure we only hit the enemy once on every swing so to avoid that we will do another variable called already damaged actors it will be of the type actor will be an array and before we print string so before here is where we would add our damage mm. so if already da damaged actor contains this Let's keep the print string. Contains this actor is false. So if already damaged actors does not contain the hit actor, we're gonna hit and damage it. 
if it already contains it, we're gonna do nothing. And here we also, after we damage it the first time, we need to add this hit actor to the array. Um, so that it can only happen once. And then when the swing ends, so this is when the damage train turns off, we're also going to go here and we're going to clear this so that we can restart that process on the next swing. So now we should only damage him once. Once. No. Once. 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 Actually, I do hit miss sometimes. Look, that was a miss. And I think that is because of the trace thing. So let's actually do what I spoke about. So let's add another trace to be sure. Damage socket one. Damage socket two. And let's make another variable. Plug in the two, the second one here. Copy all of this. Could have done that from the start. There we go. And down socket two, down socket two. This needs to be this one. Down socket two and uh, down socket one here. And go into our mesh. Damage socket one, and in this case, I can actually pull it up a little bit and damage socket two. So, probably something like that. So, that should make the traces better. Hmm. We need to do this as well. And this first one should be damage socket one. First one should be damage socket two. And that should be it. Second damage trace from the middle of the weapon mesh. delete this now because I actually ended up doing it straight away. First weapon trace from the top of the weapon. And we should probably collapse this to a function actually. Mm -hmm. And take this, collapse the function, try damage 
No, actually, let's not even do the for each loop. Let's take this. Collapse the function. Try damage actor. We don't need two inputs. We just need one. Because we might want to use this for other stuff. And now we can just paste that in here as well. A little bit cleaner and we only need to add stuff into this function instead of copy pasting it several more times. Mm, we could actually have pasted everything when I think about it and just inputted the start and end location, but this is how it is gonna be. Actually, should we do that? No. So, for duration, for duration, let's see how the traces look now. Yeah, you can see it's better. And probably actually Drag this down a little bit. And now I'm not gonna miss. There we go. Perfect. Let's turn the debugging off. And there we have our damage function. And yeah. And we can also have friendly fire. Well, we can do more stuff with that in the future. But that's going to be it for the actual tracing. Uh, in the coming vid videos, we'll probably do the actual playing damage and stuff like that. So that's going to be it for this one. I will see you in the next one. Uh, please like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And check out my Patreon. I will see you in the next one.